In this video, we're going to see how to use Spring Initializer to start off a Spring Boot project. We'll make it a Maven project, and then we're going to import it into Eclipse. So first of all, start.spring.io, that's where we want to go. Generate a, what are our choices here? Maven or Gradle? Let's go ahead and stick with Maven. And then programming languages, Java, Kotlin, and Groovy. We'll stick with Java. And Spring Boot, yeah, let's go ahead and just pick the latest version. You'll see Snapshot, uh, which if you're familiar with Maven, that you kind of know what that means. But uh, if not, uh, 204 is a safe bet. Group, I'm going to say com.plantplaces. And that's essentially who owns this application. Artifact is plant places, and these play right into that POM XML file that we use with Maven. So this is going to go directly and come up with the unique identifier for our POM file. Now, one really nice thing about Spring Initializer is it makes it really easy to add dependencies right here from this web view without actually having to go down and look up what POM entries should be and the like. It will make the POM entries for you. So dependencies, I'm gonna say time leaf, and this is a really nice one because it lets us put some kind of user interface onto our Spring Boot application. And we can even access things like our model variable and any other kind of variable or data that we want to pass into, uh, we'll pass from our backend up to our user interface. So I'll go ahead and say generate project. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and switch to the full version. Notice all of the things that uh, you can say here, all the different tick boxes that you can tick, all the way down to the persistence mechanism that you want to use, any kind of templating engine. So time leaf I mentioned is one. You see there are several others that are usable here as well. Uh, integrations with lots of other things. Uh, queues, that's something that is, is very important when we're looking at enterprise application. NoSQL databases uh, or NoSQL storage mechanisms, I should say. Cassandra, I hear a lot about that one. Mongo, definitely hear a lot about that. Uh, Solar, all kinds of really cool stuff here. Uh, cloud support just goes on and on and on. So what you're doing is you are essentially telling it what kind of POM file you want to make. In each of these tick boxes that you see here is yet another entry into that uh, POM file. So I go ahead and I say generate project. And let's say uh, open because it's going to create a zip file for us. And you see here it's made the zip file. I can simply right click on this and choose copy. And I can paste it anywhere. But one thing that I might do to make life easier is I might just go to my Eclipse workspace, which is users, administrator, and then Eclipse workspace. And what I'll do is I'll simply paste this. This is essentially what's inside the zip folder. So paste this item here. We see I called it plant places. And take a look, there's our POM file and our source folder structure with main, Java, which is where our compiled files are going to go. And under Java, we see com and then plant places. So it was kind enough to set up this package structure for us. Looks like it went a little deep and made a different, uh, made two plant places folders. So we might go clean that up in a bit. But nonetheless, source main and then resources. And this is where we will typically put resources that don't compile like HTML pages and things like that. So nonetheless, notice it's in Users, Administrator, Eclipse Workspace, and then Plant Places. Let's go back to Eclipse now, and I'm going to choose File, and I'm going to say Import. Now this is kind of interesting because how do we import a Spring Boot project? Do we have an option for that? No, we don't. Well, it is a Spring Boot project, but it's also a Maven project. So we can say existing Maven project. And essentially what's going to happen is Eclipse will use that POM XML to determine how to render this project for us. So existing Maven project, root directory, I choose browse, Eclipse workspace. Remember this plant places directory, the one I just placed there. Uh, so actually we can go up to the uh, higher level and just choose plant places. Select folder and finish. Uh, well, here's the palm, by the way, and then finish. Now, what I expect to see, actually a bit of good news here. I see the M indicating it's a Maven project and also the J indicating that it is a Java project. So let me go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't like this com.plantplaces.plantplaces. I'm going to refactor and rename this just to clean it up a little bit. And yeah, that's fine. And we'll go ahead and just chop off one plain places there. I want to go ahead and fix this early so it doesn't look crazy. And continue. 
and I think we're all good. So at this point we see it has imported the Maven project. Let's take a quick look at our POM file and sure enough we see our high level project. We see our group ID, artifact, and version. Version we can change manually as we make more versions of this. Packaging is a jar. Uh, the parent POM, which is what we need for a Spring Boot application. Any other properties like our Java version. And then some dependencies. We see time leaf. Remember that was one of the dependencies that I entered. Also the Spring Boot starter. And finally, a build plugin, which just helps Maven build this and know that it is a Spring Boot project. Under uh, Plant Places Source Main Java and then com.plantplaces, we see something here called Plant Places Application. This is essentially how we start a Spring Boot application, is we simply right click and tell this to run. It's as easy as right click run as and then Java application. Now we don't have a whole lot set up just yet. For example, we don't have a controller class. So uh, there's not a whole lot that we can see just yet, but we can at least right click and run, uh, let it do everything it needs to do to start up. As we continue to work through this, we'll add some HTML pages and templates under source main resources. Uh, but nonetheless, you see this is a Maven project, a Java project, and an Eclipse project, and it's a Maven project that knows about Spring Boot. So this will get us off to a nice start where we can continue to edit this Spring Boot project in Eclipse. I hope this was helpful. Several more videos to follow this one, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.